Welcome back to part two of this week's Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. Um, this is Saturday, January 16th, 2021. And on the Hebrew calendar, it is Shabbat uh, 2, uh, 5781. And this is, um, we're going to begin the Torah portion uh, for this week. And the Torah portion um, is known as Parashat Vayera, um, and it means, um, and I appeared. And we're going to be reading Exodus chapter 6, verses 2 through Exodus chapter 9, verses 35. Now, as we begin um, the book of Exodus, we know that um, Joseph um, had passed away, um, and he, and he his uh, descendants were all in the land of Goshen, which was within Egypt. And one of the commandments Joseph had um, asked, well, actually the covenant, I should say, that was made with Benaiah Israel was, you know, when God remembers you and takes you out of this land, remember to take my bones with you, because uh, he did not want to remain buried in Egypt. He wanted to be buried, uh, you know, with his fathers. Now, things had changed drastically uh, when Joseph was alive. Joseph was like a coat ruler um, with, with, a, with a pharaoh that was, was uh, leading Egypt at the time. He found favor with the pharaoh. And actually, pharaoh, you know, was very, very gracious to um, the children of Israel. Um, however... There is there be, there came a new pharaoh in the land who did not know Joseph did not know the whole the whole thing and he and the people of Egypt were afraid of the growth of Israel and felt that you know there were so many of them um, that they may one day overpower them and bring harm to them so instead they they enslaved um, Benaiah Israel and. Um, Then, you know, they they did some pretty horrible things. You know, they tried to destroy the male children. Um, and Moses, actually, what, during that time frame, would have been one of those children. But his mother, his mother um, kept him as long as she could. And then she put him in a, in a waterproof basket and floated him down the Nile. And the daughter of Pharaoh actually discovered uh, Moses drew him out of the Nile, and um, she actually raised him. Uh, now, he was like 40 years in Egypt, uh, living as a prince of Egypt. Uh, he, he discovered his own um, heritage, uh, actually ended up fleeing Egypt because he saw the harshness of uh, one of the Egyptians treating one of the Hebrews, um, and he actually killed him, buried him in the sand, and uh, actually, two Hebrews saw him and um, when he uh, made a comment about that, so he figured he was not safe. Also, word did get back to Pharaoh, uh, and he would have been put to death as well. So he fled uh, to Midian, uh, came across his father and well, his his wife uh, and father-in-law. At that point, this is the short, short version. Uh, Zipporah became his wife. Um, he had two sons uh, when, while he was living there, uh, but then there came a time when the Lord called him to service, and he raised him up for such a time as that, um, that he would, he would lead Benaiah Israel out of bondage uh, to free them from slavery, and the Lord, he, he tried to run from his calling. Um, <laughs> Saying that you know, you know he didn't speak well, and you know the Lord said, "I will put my words into your mouth, basically." And but I will give you your brother, who will actually be your spokesperson. So he did not take no for an answer. Moses did relent, and he listened to what the Lord said. And and what happened is he was sent. He and Aaron were sent to um to the people first, and th they were. Before they did that, you know, Mo Moses actually asked God, well, whom shall I say sent me? And this is the Lord said, I am that I am. 
uh, tell them I am sent you. And they would, he knew that they would understand. And when he did that, yes, they did. Uh, they did understand. However, things were not that easy. Um, God meant to show, you know, this was for God's glory, not, not to just like, okay, you know, go tell Pharaoh this and Pharaoh's going to say, okay. Um, no, he hardened Pharaoh's heart um, because there was, there was a point that um, he was going to make and he was going to show miracles and wonders and, and show, you know, it was, it was for his glory um, that this was to happen. So um, Moses and Aaron go to, um, to Pharaoh, the long and short of it. He had this rod that, um, that turned into a serpent, but then, um, of course, Pharaoh had also, um, uh, you know, he had the magicians there. Um, but, you know, Pharaoh, Pharaoh hardened his heart. He, he did not want to let the children of Israel go. Um, so this is where we're going to pick up the story now. That's the, the short, short, short version to get us up to speed. And we are going to continue now. God spoke further to Moses and said to him, I am Adonai. I appeared to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as El Shaddai. Yet, my name is Adonai. I made myself known to them. When we look at the name El Shaddai, it means God Almighty. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage, where they journeyed. Furthermore, I have heard the groaning of Benaiah Israel, whom the Egyptians are keeping in bondage. So I have remembered my covenant. Therefore say to Benaiah Israel, I am Adonai, and I will bring you out from under the burden of the Egyptians. I will deliver you from their bondage, and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you to myself as a people, and I will be your God. You will know that I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, and give it to you as an inheritance. I am Adonai. Moses spoke this way to Benai Israel, but they did not listen to him because of their broken spirit and cruel bondage. So Adonai told Moses, go speak to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he will let Benai Israel go out of his land. But Moses said to Adonai, Benai Israel have not listened to me, so how would Pharaoh listen to me, I who have uncircumcised lips? And Adonai spoke to Moses and to Aaron and gave them a charge for Benaiah Israel and Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring Benaiah Israel out of the land of Egypt. These are the heads of their father's houses. The sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, were Hanak, Halu, Hezron, and Carmi. These are the families of Reuben. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shal, the sons of a Canaanite woman. These are the families of Simeon. These are the sons of Levi, according to their generations, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Levi lived 137 years. The sons of Gershon were Libni and Shimei, according to their families. The sons of Kohath were Amram, Isai, Hebron, and Uziel, Kohath, lived 133 years. The sons of Merari were Mali and Mushi. These are the families of the Levite, according to their generations. Amram married Jochebed, his father's sister, and she bore him Aaron and Moses. Amram lived 137 years. The sons of Ishar and were Korah, Nepheg, and Zikri. Now, that um, actually was from, you know, co they were Kohath. They, they were cousins, actually, um, to uh, Amram and Ishar were brothers. So, so their children were cousins. 
so we we we're gonna learn later on the line what happens with Korah, and we, and we know some of our psalms are written by the sons of Korah. Okay, the sons of Uziel were Mish, Mishael, Elzathan, and Zithri. Aaron married Elsheba, daughter of Amminadab, sister of Nashon, and she bore him Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. The sons of Korah were Esther, Elkina, and Ab Abihasa. I'm getting tongue tied here. These are the families of the Korahites. Eleazar, Aaron's son, married one of the daughters of Hutiel, and she bore him Phineas. These are the heads of the ancestral houses of the Levites according to their families. These are the same Aaron and Moses to whom Adonai said, Bring Benaiah Israel out from the land of Egypt according to their divisions. These are the ones that spoke to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to bring Benaiah Israel out from Egypt. These are that same Moses and Aaron who have happened on the day when Adonai spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt that Adonai said to Moses, I am Adonai of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, everything that I tell to you. But Moses said to Adonai, I am of uncircumcised lips. So how would Pharaoh listen to me? And moving on to chapter seven. So Adonai said to Moses, see, I have sent you as God to Pharaoh and Aaron, your brother will be your prophet. You are to speak all that I command you. And Aaron, your brother is to speak to Pharaoh so that he will let the Naya Israel go out of his land. Yet I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh will not listen to you. So I will lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth my armies, my people, Benai Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. The Egyptians will know that I am Adonai when I stretch out my hand against Egypt and bring out Benai Israel from among them. So Moses and Aaron did as Adonai commanded. Moses was 80 years old. Now remember, you know, he's. He lives to be 120. He is now uh, he is now 80 years old when he comes back from from actually he left when he was in this when he was like 40 and spent 40 years you know with his you know wife's uh, father you know and, and, and siblings and um, now at 80 years old he's confronting Pharaoh. Aaron told Moses, I'm sorry, Adonai told Moses and Aaron, when Pharaoh speaks to you saying, prove yourselves with a miracle, then you are to say to Aaron, take your staff and cast it down before Pharaoh so that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went to, into Pharaoh and did as Adonai had commanded. Aaron threw down his staff before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh called for the wise men and the sorcerers, and they too. The magicians of Egypt did the same with their secret arts. For each man threw down his staff and they became serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened. So he did not listen to them, just as Adonai had said. The ten plagues begin in blood. Then Adonai said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. He refuses to let the people go, go to Pharaoh in the morning as he is coming out to the water and stand ready to meet him by the bank of the Nile. Take the staff that was transformed into a serpent in your hand. You are to say to him, Adonai, God of the Hebrews, has sent me to you, saying, Let my people go so that they may serve me in the wilderness. And behold, you have not listened. This is what Adonai says. By this you will know that I am Adonai. Behold, I will strike the waters that are in the river with a staff that is in my hand. And they will be turned to blood. The fish that are in the river will die. The river will become foul. And the Egyptians will hate to drink water from the Nile. And I said to Moses, say to Aaron, take your staff and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, over their rivers, over their streams, over their pools, and over their ponds, so that they become blood. There will be blood throughout all the land of Egypt, even in wooden and stone containers. 
So Moses and Aaron did as Adonai commanded. He lifted up the staff and struck the waters that were in the river and in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and all the waters of the Nile turned to blood. When the fish that were in the river died, the river became so foul that the Egyptians could not drink water from the river. The blood was throughout all the land of Egypt, but the magicians of Egypt did the same with their secret arts. So Pharaoh's heart was hardened, but he did not listen to them. Just as Adonai had said, Pharaoh turned and went into his house and did not even take it to heart. So all the Egyptians dug around the river for water to drink because they could not drink out of the water from the Nile. Seven days were fulfilled after Adonai had struck the Nile. Then Adonai said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what Adonai says, let my people go so they may serve me. If you refuse to let them go, see, I will strike all your territory with frogs. The river will swarm with frogs. They will go up and enter your house, into your bedroom, upon your bed, into the houses of your servants, upon your people, into your ovens, and in your kneading bowls, the frogs will climb up on you, your people, and all your servants. Frogs, gnats, and flies is the next chapter. Then Adonai told Moses, say to Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff over the rivers, canals, and pools, and cause the frogs to come up over the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of the Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land. But the magicians did the same with their secret arts and brought up frogs over the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to Adonai that he would take the frogs away from me and from my people. Then I will let the people go so they may sacrifice to Adonai. Moses answered Pharaoh, boast about me after I pray for you. When am I to pray for you, your servants and your people, that the frogs will be cut off from you and your houses and remain only in the Nile tomorrow, he said. He said, let it happen according to your word so that you may know that there is none like Adonai our God. The frogs will depart from you, from your houses, from your servants, and from your people. They will remain only in the Nile. After Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, Moses cried out to Adonai concerning the frogs which he had brought upon Pharaoh. So Adonai acted according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out in the houses, the courts, and the fields. They piled them together in large heaps, and the lands stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them, just as Adonai had said. So Adonai said to Moses, tell Aaron, stretch out your staff, strike the dust of the earth, and it will become gnats throughout all the land of Egypt. So they did. When Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth, there were gnats on men and animals. All the dust of the earth became gnats throughout all the land of Egypt. When the magicians attempted the same with their secret arts to bring forth gnats, they could not. There were gnats on men and animals. So the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. The Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he did not listen to them, just as Adonai had said. Then Adonai said to Moses, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. As he comes to the water, say to him, this is what Adonai says. Let my people go that they may serve me. Or else, if you do not let my people go, I will send a swarm of flies on you and on your servants, on your people, and into your houses. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of the swarm of flies, including the ground that they stand on. But on that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen where my people are dwelling, except no swarm of flies will be there, so that you may know that I, Adonai, am the, in the midst of the earth. I will make a distinction between my people and your people. By tomorrow, this sign will happen. Adonai did just so. A massive swarm, swarm of flies went into the house of Pharaoh and into the servants' houses. All the land of Egypt was ruined because of the swarm of flies. So Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron 
and said, Go, sacrifice to your God in the land. But Moses said, That would not be right for the offering we intend to sacrifice to Adonai, our God, are an abomination to the Egyptians. If we sacrifice what is an abomination to the Egyptians, when they stone us, we must walk a three-day journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Adonai, our God, just as he tells us. Pharaoh said, I will let you go so that you may sacrifice to Adonai, your God, in the wilderness. Only you must not go very far away. Pray for me. So Moses said, see, I am leaving you, and I will pray to Adonai that the storm of flies will depart from Pharaoh, his servants, and from his people tomorrow. However, let Pharaoh no longer deal deceitfully by not letting the people go sacrifice to Adonai. Then Moses went out from Pharaoh and prayed to Adonai. Adonai acted according to the word of Moses and removed the swarm of flies from Pharaoh and from his servants and from his people. Nothing remained. But Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also and did not let the people go. So next we have the next set of plagues. I'm going to come back um, with part three and we're going to finish out um, the Torah portion and then recap that um, I'm running out of time here. So we'll be back to part three.